garden friends welcome to another episode of aj's green thumb i know it's been a minute but i thought i'd take you guys along with me today as i pruned two of my crepe myrtles in the front yard the latin name is legastromia indica or indian crepe myrtle i think the two trees i have in the front are of the variety called biloxi which has pale pink flowers and they get to be between 12 to 15 feet tall and wide. The second variety I think it may be is called Muskegee. Muskegee's are more of a lavender pink flowering variety and they get a little bit bigger than the Biloxi's. So the Muskogee's or the Muskogee's they get to be between 20 to 25 feet tall and roughly 15 to 20 feet wide. Crepe myrtles are native to the Himalayas or Southeast Asia, places like Japan, uh, Southern China. Here in the United States, they're hardy between zones seven and nine, and I'm at seven A, so I'm at the cusp. So in a zone seven situation, they need to be situated in full sun, which they are here in the front yard because the front yard is south facing. So some of the tools I have to do this pruning job are my trusty dusty DeWalt 20 volt brushless handsaw with a few extra blades. The next to that, I have a folding pruning saw. I think it's about 12 inches. Then I got this pole pruners. Then I also have a pair of Fiskars. These are some very nice pruners because they're very ergonomic. The bottom part rotates, which provides a very comforting grip and it's adaptable to whatever type of um, I guess whatever type of stance you may have when you prune, followed by some loppers. These are also Fiskars. And last but not least, some eye protection. So let's go. So both of these crepe myrtles have a unique vase shape, very broad on the top and very narrow at the base. So that one in particular had some damage after that recent snowstorm we had. So after closer inspection, you can see this branch right here totally split from this trunk. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this way back to the crotch right here. So observing the canopy of this crepe myrtle is that you wanna refrain from pruning any of the top portions of the canopy. Now, if it's a smaller crepe myrtle, for example, over here in the side yard, I have this more dwarf form crepe myrtle. It has practically black or purple black leaves. It's really beautiful. I'll go ahead and throw a picture up on the screen and it has very hot pink blooms and it blooms between late June all the way until late fall. So when crepe myrtles are young, like this one is, or they are the dwarf varieties, it's okay to go ahead and prune the top of the canopy. You can prune it back practically two feet from the ground because crepe myrtles are very resilient and they'll grow back very quickly. The only areas of a mature crepe myrtle that you wanna prune would be thinning out the trunk. Since this is a multi-trunked shrub, generally speaking, 
you're supposed to have no more than five to seven, uh, I guess you can say trunks, all right, since it's a multi-trunk shrub. In this case, I can count right now at least 10. So this crepe myrtle and the other one will need to be thinned out drastically in the near future if I wanna keep them for a long time. But today we're just gonna go ahead and take care of any damaged, diseased looking branches. We're gonna go ahead and remove any branches that are crossing, such as this one right here. These two right here are crossing, okay? So another thing with crepe myrtles or mature crepe myrtles, the only time you want to cut up in the canopy is if you're removing any branches that are thinner than a pencil. So that's the thing to always remember. If it's thinner than a pencil, you get rid of it. If any of the trunks are rubbing against one another, preferably earlier on when the shrub is in its uh, younger stage, you wanna go ahead and uh, remove one of those crossing branches because over time what happens when branches rub against one another they start to bruise and a wound can actually open up and therefore introducing uh, diseases and insects to go in and you know cause havoc So another thing I want to prevent with this crepe myrtle, being that it's so close to the street and the fence, when it rains and when it snows, this crepe myrtle, well, both of them really, they tend to bow all the way down to the ground. And in this case with the fence, and it's full of blooms in the summertime. So when it rains, this crepe myrtle actually projects into the sidewalk. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and prune back some of the uh, overarching branches uh, in that direction. I don't know if you guys even saw that, but whatever. So now I wanna help open up the interior of the plant. Okay, so this one right here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off. All right, well, I'm sure there's more cuts that can be made, but uh, as for now, I think it looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna move over to the other crepe myrtle. So this tree doesn't have as many issues as the last one. That one had some winter damage. I'm gonna remove as many crossing branches and the branches that are overarching into the sidewalk.
one thing to note with a lot of these branches, they'll become very useful in the spring when I'm making uh, teepees for sweet peas and other vining crops. Make use of everything you got. Don't throw it away. So last but not least, I gotta clear up that little uh, cluster of branches right there. They're all tangled up. All right, garden friends, I guess this is a wrap because I've totally created a war zone out here. I've got a lot of debris to go ahead and clean up now. All of this right here, I'm gonna run through, chop it up, salvage the pieces that I need to keep. some really nice sturdy pieces right here that I can definitely use elsewhere in the garden all right garden friends thanks for hanging with me on this episode and I'll see you on the next one AJ's green thumb